Okay, it's two o'clock, so we'll uh, get started. Hello and welcome to this webinar today. Thanks very much uh, for taking some time out of your day to uh, come and learn a little bit about the Hostets Collaborate product. Uh, this is a training module. It's going to last approximately 20 minutes um, and, and basically it will constitute a, a live demonstration to show you how it actually works. Um, few bits that we're going to cover. Um, you've probably, if you've joined this webinar, you've probably already had uh, the Collaborate application deployed to your organization. Perhaps you're considering it uh, as part of a, a deployment or, you know, maybe you've been using it for some time and just fancied a little bit of a refresher. Um, the live dem, it's going to uh, constitute logging in um, dead easy. You should be able to do that. Um, and a couple of tips as we go along with that. Uh, overview of the menu system, the presence function, which is something that is really key to this particular product, given that none of us are um, in the office and we can't see what all of our colleagues are up to just now. Um, so we're going to cover that one off. Uh, contacts and directory. Um, so accessing your contacts dead easily, making contact with them um, and accessing the corporate and internal directories as you go along. Um, a simple one, but one that needs to be covered. Uh, making and receiving calls and transferring them between yourself and colleagues within your organization. We're going to have a little bit on that. Uh, call history, accessing that particular side of things. So if you've missed any calls that you need to call back and what have you. Accessing voicemail, if that's something that you've got installed onto your uh, telephone system. Uh, the chat function, you're going to be able to, at the end of this webinar, be able to use that as well to quickly and efficiently communicate with colleagues. And then we're going to round up on uh, looking at my room, which is the audio and video uh, conferencing element of Collaborate, where you can share your screen, things like that, and it's all built in. A um, couple of bits of useful resources at the end. Uh, and just a note that if you've got any questions, you can pose them via the Q&A section. Uh, that's at the, um, the bottom of the, uh, I'll, I'll try and pick them up as we go along. If not, I'll uh, pick them up at the end um, and what have you. If they're too complex, I'll take them offline and make contact with you. Okay, so straight into the demonstration then. So at first, when you have uh, Collaborate assigned to you, our uh, service delivery agents will have sent you or you'll have had a professional installation of the application onto your PC. But it's a simple download, um, run the application, next, 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 install, that sort of thing, as I'm sure many of you are used to. Um, one of the things that you are given by our support team will be a username, which will look something like uh, an email address, more than likely, and a super long and super uh, secure password that you enter into this section um, in, in the uh, load on, uh, loading sequence. Uh, a couple of tips when you're logging in, I would probably hit remember password. Uh, this password is super long and, and quite difficult to remember. And also, uh, if you're anything like me, um, when I get up in the morning, I load my computer up and leave it while I go and make a cup of tea and all the applications sort of log in and, and, and load up. Uh, if you click sign in automatically, when it does that, it'll load in and uh, sign in for you uh, while you're doing that. So I click the sign in button and up pops the application. Um, this is the, the default um, window. So this is the contacts window. And we're going to walk through um, from the top down, I suppose, the menu system that, we, that we've got in place here. Uh, my name's Porky Pig. Um, the reason for that is I've put on a few pounds since the beginning of lockdown. Um, but the first section that we're going to look at is the presence function. Um, as you can see at the moment, I am set for available. And, and what this actually is, is this is what's telling the rest of your organization, uh, what is your current status? Um, like I said just a few minutes ago, is that we're not sat next to each other any longer. We can't look across the room to see if someone's uh, at the desk able to take a call, for example, or they've popped away from their desk um, to have a meeting or you know, make a cup of tea or whatever. So this is actually giving the information to, the, to my colleagues within my organization that I can take a call. And if I set that to automatic, it will actually update according to what I might be up to. So if I'm to take a call, if I take a call via this application, um, it will actually put me into a busy status so that everyone else that is using this uh, within the organization can see I'm in a, on a call and busy and therefore can't take another one. 
Um, if you've got a meeting scheduled, perhaps you've got a meeting that is loaded into your Outlook um, calendar and what have you and set to busy, it, it will read that information as well and put that, put your status into meeting automatically. Uh, similarly, um, if you've been away from your desk um, for, for some time, uh, perhaps you've, you've, you've popped uh, into the kitchen um, and, and got collared on the way back to do a little bit of homeschooling or something. If you've been away or idle from your computer for a certain amount of time, um, then the, the application will put you into an away status automatically. That's if you've set yourself as automatic. You can also set these manually. So if you want to just inform the rest of your colleagues that you're going to be temporarily out, um, or you've gone for the day, uh, perhaps I will set my status to that at the end of this webinar. Yeah, you, know, you can do so. You can do that manually so that, again, everyone else in the organisation can actually see that, what, what your status is. And that's going to become a bit more clear as well when we, we had a few contacts. In. I'm going to put myself back into automatic. All right. If we go into the contacts page, accessed via this particular button, there's several buttons down the left hand side, which we're going to go through. The first thing you see is a, a search facility. And this search facility can search the internal directory. So all of the people on your, um, in your organization using um, the host X service. Um, it also searches the corporate directory. So if you've asked us to upload uh, a directory of your customers and suppliers or, or whatever, uh, we'll have loaded them in. You'll be able to access that uh, via this search function. Or indeed, if you've got Outlook on your computer and a stack of contacts loaded into the, the contacts element of Outlook, it can uh, quite easily search that just from this simple interface. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to search for a couple of my colleagues. And this is what I'd recommend you to do uh, when you first install and, and get familiar with the system. So I've done a, done a quick search with bugs um, and I'm going to what I'm going to do, right click and add that to my contact list for easy access later. I'm going to add a couple more actually. I'm going to go for uh, Daffy. So right click, add as contact and um, Wiley Coyote as well. I think we'll have as well. So right click and add to contact. Okay, so that's given me, I've now got three contacts in my contact list. Um, and actually just Going back to the presence function, what we can see here is a visual um, that Bugs Bunny is in a meeting. Uh, Daffy is green, so that's green for uh, good to go, available. Uh, Wiley Coyote, the little rascal, is actually um, white and is offline. And, and from here, you know, you've got quite easy accessibility where I can very quickly hover over. I can send uh, a chat message to Bugs Bunny or I can instigate a telephone call very, very, very quickly. We're going to cover that in a little bit. Um, what I do in my organization, uh, we've got 40 or so people that, you know, that I work with, and they're all in different teams and what have you. So I have my contacts really nicely organized. So I'm going to, I'm going to start to organize them into groups. So the way that I do that, if I pop to contacts here and I click new group, I'm just going to put in there my team uh, and add that in. Okay, so it's, it's sort of created a, a, a subgroup here. What I'm going to do is right click that, add to group, add to my team, and I'm adding Bugs Bunny into uh, my team. And I'm going to do the same for uh, the Daffy Duck. So what you can say, so in my organization, I would have one for engineers, I would have some one for service delivery people, account managers, billing people, and what have you. And that becomes quite um, relevant when I, perhaps I, I need to speak to someone in, in that particular area. I can see in this particular team that if I wanted an answer that was related to whatever these guys do, I know there's no point in me trying to ring Bugs Bunny because he's in a meeting, but Daffy would be able to answer the question uh, that I have. To add to that, um, the, there are certain people that undoubtedly speak more to within your organization and, and, and therefore have a little bit more importance and you want to access those people as you know, quickly and as efficiently as possible. So we have a favorite. So I can right click Wiley Coyote and I can set them as a favorite. And actually they'll appear at the right at the top of my contact list so that you know, those are the people that I'm regularly in contact with and I really need to speak to all of the time. So rather than having to scroll up and down, once if you imagine once you've got 30 or so contacts in here, um, I can actually access them really, really easy. 
if I wanted to. Um, so, you know, now that we've sort of got some contacts in and, um, you know, set them into some sort of uh, organization, if I just want to demonstrate how easy it is to uh, start communicating with these people. So I can see that Bugs Bunny is on, on in a meeting at the moment. So I'm not going to try and call them, but perhaps I can send them a little message. So all I'm going to do is, hi, Bugs, please give me a call once you're out of the meeting. That's instantly uh, been sent to Bugs Bunny and, and they'll be able to um, access that straight away. And indeed, um, ah, <laughs> Bugs is online. That, that wasn't prompted, honestly. Um, but yeah, you can see that um, you know, Bugs is able to send me a quick text message back. But quite useful if um, you've got someone online, perhaps, and, and you can send a message to say, I've got such and such, really need to speak to you. Can you come away for, uh, off the call that you're on at the moment? Or if you've got a chance, can you take a call, come out of your meeting shortly? Okay, I'm going to close that. Similarly, um, I could, if I wanted to, quickly click that, that button there and it would instigate a telephone call um, to Bugs quite straightforward. If I wanted to, I could also instigate a video call. This particular platform supports video call, uh, calls between users as well um, across multiple. Okay, um, I did mention that you could search the corporate directory in here as well. So I am gonna do a little bit of a search for the Tasmanian devil. Um, so this particular user, they're not a user on the system, but I've already got their telephone number in. Um, so I've searched my corporate directory and I can very quickly call um, if I wanted to the Tasmanian just by clicking that button. I'm just going to hang that call up. Okay, so the, this is the, the page, the contacts list is where you would do most of the amount of business um, when, you, when you're operating this particular application. Um, if I pop into call history, as you would expect under call history, um, as it says on the tin, I've got a, a detailed list of all the telephone calls that I've made and received um, using my extension, my user on this. So you can see I just made a very quick call, although it wasn't answered to the Tasmanian devil. Um, I missed a call earlier from this particular mobile. That's why it's highlighted in red. Um, and I did receive a call yesterday at, at half past one, approximately it came in. That's what the arrow on there signifies. So a full, contact list, uh, a full call history um, of what you've been doing. And there's up to 50 entries in there. So what you can do on here, double click dial in. So if, if I wanted to, if I'd missed a call from this particular telephone number, I could very quickly double click it and I'd actually start to make the telephone call there. Um, if you use voicemail within your organization, um, you, you can, what if you actually get a voicemail delivered to your personal mailbox, then it will be accessible here. So here's one I left earlier. Um, and from here, I can easily play it through my headphones or through the um, speakers on my laptop. Or if perhaps I've already spoken to this person, I don't need to uh, listen to the message. I can simply delete the message straightforward. And that received, uh, removes the notification um, as well. Um, if you're like me, I, you, you don't want to see those notifications if you've already dealt with them. So very simple call history and voicemail access, dead, dead straightforward. Um, if I pop into the chat history, um, so what we can see here is that um, any chats that you've had between uh, users uh, or indeed groups of users, you can see this particular one is a group where we've got Porky Pig, Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. That means I can chat between all of the team in general. You can have as many users in here as you want. So they're all in a chat room and that's quite useful for teams that are dealing with certain inquiries. So let's just say our billing team, for example, um, someone in billing has taken a call from a customer and they're not quite sure of the answer. They can drop a little message in here to the rest of the team. And if someone knows the answer, they can give it to them or indeed say, ah, transfer the call to me. I know all about that particular inquiry. I'll get that sorted for you, hand them over to me and I'll deal with the inquiry. It just enhances the experience um, that the, uh, the caller is receiving from you, but very quick access to be able to um, talk to the rest of your team there. An important bit, a dial pad, something that you'll be familiar with. Um, and uh, simple as that, you can actually 
dial the number using your, your mouse in order to initiate telephone calls. So I'd simply put the telephone number in and select call. That would instigate a telephone number. I can use the keypad on my keyboard in order to type the telephone numbers in. Or indeed, if I wanted to, I could copy a, a, a telephone number from an email that I'd received or a website that I was browsing, simply copy and paste the telephone number into here, hit the call button, and away we go. We would be straight into a telephone call. Uh, I'm gonna make a little call into the system now to just demonstrate what happens and uh, the sort of in-call options. Getting a call here, you can see a couple of notifications that are coming along. If I click answer, mute the actual phone that's calling, um, you're actually given a few options. So I'm now in call with um, this particular person who's dialed in on this particular number. Um, I've got a few options that I can take from here. I can hang up, be a little bit rude, having only been on the call for a few seconds. Um, I can put them on hold, um, which will give them the latest rendition of green sleeves or perhaps a marketing on hold message that um, you've asked us to upload to the telephone system. Um, I can put the person on mute. So I, I can be on mute, perhaps I need to just um, uh, go and grab a file or um, whatever that is, is a case may be. I can pop the, the, the call on mute so they can't hear what I'm saying. Um, one, one of the most important things is that I can transfer a telephone call. So if I get a call that um, I need to transfer to someone else, I can do that relatively easily. I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, furthermore, I can add people into the conference. So if I click that button, um, I can add bugs uh, or Daffy into the call and connect a audio conference really, really easily. I can part the call and I can also, if this was an internal call, I could add video um, into, the, uh, into the equation as well. But the, the one that I'm going to go through um, is the transfer. So if I hit the transfer button, it will open up uh, the window to the side. Um, and I'm going to, if you imagine the person who's calling is saying, could I, could I speak to um, someone in your, in your team, uh, let's say Bugs. So I'll do a little search and I can see that Bugs is there, but I can also see that they're in a meeting. And again, referring back to the presence function that we uh, spoke about earlier, I'm probably going to say to the, the, the inquiry, the person who's calling, I'm going to say, right, okay, Bugs isn't available just at the moment. And you know, so I can take a message or perhaps I can even help, or perhaps I can just have a little look and see if one of these colleagues is available. Uh, and I can see that Daffy Duck is available. And if Daffy was in the same team, then, you know, I might say to the caller that Bugs isn't free, but his colleague Daffy is available to take a call and we'll be able to deal with your inquiry. Um, at that point, I can select Daffy. I've got three options here, but really two that you would potentially use in this certain scenario. I can transfer now. Now that would be a, a blind transfer, as I would call it. So if I click that button, the call is going to go straight through to Daffy with no announcement or anything. His phone is just going to start ringing. Um, the more uh, preferred route and one that most people use is the attended audio function. So attended audio means that I'm going to place the caller on hold just with one click. I will then be placing a call effectively to Daffy. Daffy will answer, hopefully. Um, I'm not going to do this just now, but uh, theoretically speaking, Daffy will answer. I'll say, I've got such and such on the phone just now. Can you take it? Uh, they will say yes. And then I will transfer the call straight through to them. As simple and as easy as that. I'm going to hang up that call now, um, as I think we've, uh, we've, we've looked at that. Okay, the final sort of section that I'm going to do, in fact, one more before I go. Um, you may well, your users may well be in hunt groups as well. So identifying a call that has come in via a hunt group as opposed to a DVI is quite important. So if I'm, I'm going to make a second call, and we can see here that I've labeled this particular call up as the support line. Um, so this could be labeled up with, um, it could be labeled up with a team name, or it could be labeled up with a company name. Perhaps your company is, um, or your organization deals with several different brands, for example. So um, here in Midshire, we, we, we deal with legal organizations as well. Um, uh, you know, so we may want to answer the call as, uh, as legal TX as opposed to Midshire, for example. So we would label the call up as it came into the organization so we could handle that correctly. Um, but it could be in terms of a team or, or whatever, but it's just demonstrating that 
you're getting a notification to say that you, what the call is going to be about. Okay, the final section that I'm going to look at is the My Room functionality. And that's accessible at the top here. It looks a little bit like a, a house uh, with a few dots in. It's your own personal meeting room. Uh, and if I bring that up, what you can see here um, on, on this section is where the meeting room can happen. So what I can do, I can actually drag people from my organization. I'm gonna drag Bugs in. Bugs will get a notification that he's being invited to my meeting room. Um, and, and he's actually in a meeting at the moment, so it's unlikely that he's going to respond and join. But what I can also do if I enhance the uh, move up and escalate to a conference call, anyone from the external, um, anyone externally can actually dial this particular telephone number here, enter the conference ID and have a conference call with us. Um, you know, really straightforward and easy to use. So that could be um, organized or quite simply a, a, an impromptu uh, voice meeting. In addition to that, this platform does support video. Um, so in terms of uh, internally within your organization, I know there are Zoom like we're using now, or Teams and things like that that people are using, but this does also support um, video calls from there as well. And indeed, if you want to some, invite someone from external to access a video conference call, then you can actually send them a link uh, which they can open up in a browser such as Google Chrome and, and access exactly the same information and, um, and actually be shown on the screen in the video capacity. This also supports sharing. So if I was to click this button here, I would be able to start sharing my screen with everybody who was participating within the meeting. I'm going to uh, dismiss bugs out of the meeting in all fairness. You've got a, a few security functions here with you can allow it so that anyone can join. Um, you know, uh, we've heard a lot about Zoom bombing over the last 12 months. And, and also, but, but more likely, every time someone joins, uh, you can actually give them access or deny them if it wasn't someone you were expecting. So there's, a, there's some security features within built within the platform um, that you can use um, to, to, for the security of it. Okay, um, we haven't got any questions that have come, so I'm going to assume that everything there that I've covered has, has uh, covered it off. In fact, um, there you can see the call that I missed before is, is there. So you wouldn't have a webinar um, without, a, a webinar wouldn't be a webinar without just giving you a bit more information on the actual bolt-ons that are available here. Um, and the training that we're going to be doing on them in the future. So we've just covered the desktop app, um, really, but there is the, the exact same application or a very similar application is available for Apple, iPhone, and um, Android devices. It works exactly the same and in tandem with what the, the application that we've just been using. Um, that is available um, if you're not using that or if it's more convenient to use a, a mobile app rather than a, than a, a desktop PC or laptop app. Then, then that could be for you. Um, we integrate with the latest and greatest um, customer relationship management tools like Salesforce, Dynamics, and so on and so forth. If you want to integrate the platform with that, talk to our account, your account manager. Um, full call recording, and that, and that is from um, a mobile point of view as well as the desktop app and, in, and indeed a desk phone app um, if, you, if you want to record calls all in one central depository. That is available there. Uh, call reporting, that's been an absolute godsend to us in particular over the last 12 months with everybody working from home, being able to make sure that all of our customers uh, are actually getting through to somebody um, that can help. That's been really, really important through the pandemic. Um, and yeah, these, this particular platform supports the latest handsets um, and headsets that are available out there in the marketplace and it's a unified communications product. I've just had a question come in and yeah, absolutely. So there is gonna be a webinar on the mobile application. We're gonna get that out. That was currently scheduled for uh, another two weeks, actually. We haven't sent the invites out, but um, uh, Nigel, I'll get in touch with you actually, and we can do a little bit of training um, on that. I can show you and demonstrate it actually. Really, really straightforward. So. Um, leave that one with me and I'll make contact with you afterwards. Um, okay, so 
in terms of uh, the webinar, all that's left for me, for me to say is thank you very much for joining. Um, if you want a little bit more information on what we've covered today, we do have a YouTube channel. All you need to do is search uh, for Midshire Telecom within YouTube. Uh, and my colleague, Adris, has actually done quite a lot of training webinars, perhaps just in little bite-sized chunks, uh, where you can access them, you know, learning how to add contacts again or answer telephone calls using the presence function. They're all in there, including how to install the application on your on your PC, which we didn't actually cover today. So if you'd like to have a look at that, um, you know, welcome to do so. Um, but on that note, thank you very much again for joining. Hope you enjoyed the webinar. Hope it's uh, coming in useful and uh, look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you.